In this video, we're going to go over the concept of infinite limits. So to do that, it's good to look at an example. So let's look at this function f of x equals 1 over x minus 2. Now I chose this function because it's one of our parent functions and it's pretty easy to sketch a graph of it. It's the reciprocal function. Uh, shifted to the right two units. That means we go over two units. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. And it's going to look something like so. Now, of course, as with all limits, at f of 2, we would get 1 over 2 minus 2, which would give us undefined. But we don't really necessarily care what's happening at 2. What we want to know is what's happening as we approach 2. So let's take a look at this limit here. Let's say we wanted the limit as x approaches 2 from the positive side of 1 over x minus 2. Well, as we're approaching from the positive side, so that means we're approaching from the right side, what's happening to our function? Well, as we get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to 2, our function is starting to go higher and higher and higher towards infinity. So in this case, we're going to answer that this limit is infinity. So that's the concept of an infinite limit. An infinite limit is, well, when you have a function where as you approach a number, your function starts going to either positive infinity or negative infinity, and it doesn't approach a number, another number, then we call that an infinite limit. We can do it with the other side. The limit as x approaches 2 from the negative side of 1 over x minus 2. Again, as we start approaching our function from the left-hand side, our function starts going towards negative infinity. So we say this is negative infinity. Well, now that we know 1 goes to positive infinity, 1 goes to negative infinity, we could answer this question, what is the limit as x approaches 2 of 1 over x minus 2? And in this case, because they're going to different directions, we would say that this does not exist. Okay, so there's the basic concept of infinite limits. Um, the concept itself I don't think is very complicated. Sometimes depending on the rational function you do get, it can be a little difficult to figure out, well, where is this thing going, depending on its positive infinity, negative infinity, or, um, as we'll have an example, it could just be a removable, removable discontinuity and you can find the limit. Um, one thing to keep um, kind of note here is there is kind of a disagreement in mathematics where um, you can actually take a limit of something going to infinity. Some professors would say, no, you can't do that because in order to have a limit, it has to go to a number. Some math professors and stuff would say, oh, well, you can. It does go to infinity. So to kind of help with this idea of the disagreement, um, they create this thing called an infinite limit. So even though it seems kind of um, picky, uh, there is a difference between a limit and an infinite limit. A limit has to go to a number. An infinite limit can go to positive or negative infinity. And different books treat it different, differently. This book believes in the idea, the author of this book believes in the idea that you can't have a limit that goes to infinity. You have to use this concept of an infinite limit. So let's go ahead and write, write that down. Note. 
an infinite limit is not the same as a limit. All right, so I just said that. An infinite limit and a limit are two different things. A limit requires a function to approach a number. Okay, so it's got to approach a number. An infinite limit requires f of x. An infinite limit requires f of x to lie arbitrarily bar from the origin. All right, so it's kind of one of those subtle little things. The only reason I'm telling, I mean, for me personally, it's not that big of a deal. I don't get into that kind of nitpicky part of uh, mathematics, but if you guys get to college and the professor does care, I mean, well, they're the professors. You make sure you care also for at least that class um, because you know, if you accidentally write it wrong and then you get points off, that's um, usually not fun. So I just wanted to let you guys know that it, there is a difference between an infinite limit and a limit with a lot of uh, you know, math professors out there. Um, and so just to kind of keep track of which is which, and then whenever you take a class, just make sure you know what the professor wants and write it that way. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's try another example. So for this example, um, we have a function f of x equals one over x minus one squared. Okay, we wanna find the following. A, what is the limit as x approaches one from the negative side of f of x? What is the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side? And see what is the limit as x approaches 1? These are both of f of x. All right, so here's our function, and here's the three questions. Now, of course, part C will be easy enough. Once we know part A and B, we just see if they're the same or not, and then that's the answer to part C. So you get this question here, and you have to evaluate these limits. And when you're working with infinite limits, really you have two choices on how to evaluate this. The first choice is know how to graph it. If you know how to graph this function, then you can just look at the graph and answer the questions. Um, the other way will be numerically. So for this one here, I feel like we would know how to graph this. So let's try the graphing approach on this one. So this one here, if I were to have one over x squared, one over x squared, all we have to do is think about this. I mean, one over x has the two sides like this. Well, if I square everything, it just takes a negative and makes it positive. So one over x squared is just gonna look like quick sketch here. Sometimes if you think about these things and use your knowledge of parent functions, it's um, pretty quick to be able to sketch some of these um, other functions. So then the minus one is we shifted over one unit to the right, and so our function is going to look something like this. So here's one. 1 and, and there's our function. Right. So now that we have our function, 
then it's easy enough to evaluate these limits. So as the limit as x approaches 1 from the negative side, so we're approaching from the negative side, and as we get closer to 1, this thing is approaching infinity. As we're approaching 1 from the positive side, or the right-hand side, we keep on getting going to infinity. And as we approach 1 from both sides, it's also going to infinity. And this one was easy to do because if these two limits are both going to positive infinity, then this infinite limit must also be going to positive infinity. All right, so there's an example, kind of like the first one, just slightly different. But in this one, we were able to graph the equation. And so because we could do a quick sketch of the graph, we were able to show um, through a graphing approach what these limits are.